Dr. Shailesh, on behalf of the Delhi Gynae Forum, I welcome you for a talk on anatomy, on pelvic anatomy. And uh, let me introduce Dr. Shailesh, though all of us know him so well and he needs no introduction. Sir is the director of uh, Galaxy Center at Pune, and uh, he has patented the radical hysterectomy, the laparoscopic radical hysterectomy. He is done as so proud, he is known all over the world as an endoscopic surgeon from India. Uh, thank you, sir, for sparing your time and uh, teaching us. Um, and I would now request Dr. Sharda Jain, ma'am, our leader and our guide to kindly say a few words. Madam, not this uh, thing at all, please uh, stop it. Uh, I think great uh, welcome to Dr. Uh, Salish. Uh, I know him that he's a great surgeon. The mother Bhart Ma, Ma Bharti has produced is known all over the world, not only the length and breadth of this particular country. Thank and you. he has contributed greatly to the speciality of uh, surgery, especially in developing, in helping gynecologists to develop MIS uh, uh, surgery is one of, as one of his branches. And uh, we all know that uh, India lacks today the great training program as far as the gynecological surgery is concerned. I've been trained and taught at PGI Chandigarh, and I can know it that, you know, people when they get out after doing senior residency uh, are just confident in doing cesarean sections. I'm not too sure that they are overconfident as far as hysterectomies are concerned. And uh, it pains me that, you know, when it comes to MIS surgery, not at all. So I think, you know, when you talk about uh, this particular thing, I would like uh, five minutes, you must focus how to develop training program as far as the MIS uh, training is concerned uh, in our gynecology practice. So I think that particular part is very, very important because if the training part is not highlighted, then I think uh, uh, we are getting a disaster. People attend two, three uh, um, workshops and they feel they think that they are uh, on the top of the world and then you can find a whole lot of litigations against them and then as uh, sitting there in an NMC I know that uh, that's not done so uh, uh, sir uh, welcome you again uh, to you. talk on a very basic thing that is anatomy as if you want to become a, a good MIS surgeon as far as our speciality is concerned so that's thank you sir Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for the kind uh, uh, invitation and also the introduction. It's a pleasure. What you say is totally right that uh, it is not about just doing surgery. It's about understanding the surgery. That's the most important thing. So in the next uh, few minutes or one hour, I will try and share with you all that is needed to learn anatomy and how to make go forward with this. So... Uh, again, this one. I think you are, you are seeing the slide. Where that may play a Yeah, I have just yeah. Okay. So, uh, are you able to see the slides now? Yes. Hello. Yes. We're seeing. We're seeing, yeah. we're seeing the program. Uh, uh, so program slide. Come. Yeah, so this is yeah, the uh, yeah, greetings yeah. from Galaxy Care Hospital, uh, Pune. Uh, pelvic anatomy, knowing the basics is what I say. So this is like three idiots, what uh, Madam Jain was saying, that you know how, that it can be done. The question is, do you know how to do a fine laparoscopic surgery? And this is what everybody craves for. So for me, which I've been training people for last almost more than 15 years, I feel that laparoscopy is for everybody. The only thing is that you have to know the basics of anatomy. All you know about this is anatomy, anatomy and nothing else. So whether you do robotic surgery, whether you do uh, single port surgery, whether you do open surgery, what you should be knowing is anatomy. And when I talk about anatomy, it is not about the anatomy as the anatomist. We don't want to know the insertion and the origin of the muscles. You don't want to know the insertion and origin of the nerve. 
this is what god has made and how best i can use this anatomical knowledge to define my steps to decide how you should be doing the surgery this is the basic focus of doing this this is more so important when we are dealing with uh, pelvic anatomy with laparoscopy the reason is because you have very limited vision when you have very limited vision the biggest thing that comes in my mind is what lies where because you are not seeing 360 degrees what comes next and this is the most important thing so when you do something anticipation is the most important thing and anticipating the structure before it comes that is more important and that is what we call it as predictive anatomy this word that i wrote in my paper which is published in figo as well as which i have written in my book has become very important aspect of understanding predict your structures before they come don't predict your structures later gone are the days when we learned our anatomy on a cadaver where nothing was nicely visible the best anatomy is learned in live patients and today on 21st in the 21st century the way in which you teach anatomy has completely become different so many people can be taught at the same time so as soon as you put laparoscope inside these are certain anatomical landmarks you should be aware of what are these landmarks the most important thing is obliterated hypocaustic ligament or artery which is known as the medial umbilical ligament the medial umbilical ligament these are two on the either side which can be easily seen so what is the significance of this if you remain in between the two the bladder lies between the two medial umbilical ligament if you do not cross the medial umbilical ligament then you will not be able to go lateral into the major planes but if you remain lateral to the medial umbilical ligament there is no way you can damage the bladder so if you want to know where the bladder lies it lies between the two medial umbilical ligament this is the next picture that you see you see the entire extra peritoneal or retro peritoneal anatomy you should try and identify each one of them that is the most important thing the most lateral structure or which you see today in any female pelvis is the genito femoral nerve and followed by that is the external iliac artery so these are immediately visible and this is what makes the anatomy much easy we all know that the organs of the pelvis lie in the midline that is the bladder the rectum the cervix they lie in the midline while the blood supply comes from the lateral side how do you use this knowledge of anatomy we know that there is a long length of vessel available for ligation before they reach the organs so if that is so in case you are bleeding when you are operating on a total laparoscopic hysterectomy or close to the organ and the vessel doesn't seem to get control remember that there is enough length of vessel available for you to go ahead and do the entire clamping the pelvis starts at the level of the sacral promontory and this is the highest point of pelvis so frank rater's anatomy gray's anatomy will classify abdomen into abdominal organs and pelvic organs the pelvic starts at the level of the pelvic the sacral promontory and this is the peak from where everything goes here the most important thing as i said none of the none of the pathologies which you can see endometriosis large cervical fibroid large uteruses large cancers they never reach the sacral promontory so how do you use this knowledge of anatomy if whenever you are having difficulty in the pelvis a difficult uterus a difficult pathology start at the level of the sacral promontory simple message that is important what happens at the sacral promontory of course there are three things which happen the ureter crosses from the lateral to the medial side now and continues to remain as the mes most medial organ in the pelvis how do you use this knowledge of anatomy if you remain medial to the ureter there is no way you are going to damage the internal iliac artery or any nerve the second thing that happens is the bifurcation of the common iliac into the external and internal iliac artery and the third thing is the presence of we call it as a superior hypogastric plexus so in case when you want to do any kind of pelvic 
floor uh, repairs or when you want to do cervical fixing, when you fix the mesh to the sacral promontory, remember that there is hypogastric plexus, the superior hypogastric plexus, which is very, very close at the level of the sacral promontory. That's where the bifurcation of the aorta just about lies. And after a fixation, if the patient doesn't pass tools or has constipation, it is the nerve that we have damaged. So let us start with the basics. Now, these are the things, these are the four things that I'm going to talk about. One is the pelvic spaces and then the pelvic ligaments and everything is of very, very importance when you want to talk about this. What are the pelvic spaces we know of? The pelvic spaces we know of is the rectovaginal space. This space lies between the uterosacrals. So if you remain medial to the uterosacral, there is no way you can damage any ureter, any vessel or any nerve. So important thing to understand is that when you antivert the uterus, you remain between the two uterosacral, between medial to the uterosacral, you will never ever damage any major structure. So simple knowledge of anatomy helping you to devise strategies to do the surgery. The second important space is the pararectal space. As you can see, pararectal is parallel to the rectum and therefore it is divided into two types which I will again talk about it. Paravesicle is a space which is lateral to the bladder and that is because therefore it is called as the paravesicle space and of course the prevesicle space and every space has important. Now, when you want to start any kind of difficult surgery, I always suggest that if there is a difficult pathology, start at the level of the sacral promontory and then you can go into the pouch of Douglas and that will help you to devise and see both the ureter as well as the nerve. Now, this is how you do the dissection in the rectovaginal space. This is something which is asked by majority of the gynecologists because nowadays, a lot of people are getting into endometriotic surgery. And this is where the endometriosis is stuck. So if during a normal case, you train yourself to go into the rectovaginal pouch, what is the dictum? The fat belongs to the rectum. If you remain above the fat, then there are two layers of denominalous fascia. One layer goes with the posterior wall of the vagina. One layer goes anterior to the rectum. And this is the plane Fat belongs to the rectum. Let's come to the pararectal space. The pararectal space as it can devise and is called, it is parallel to the rectum and is divided into two by the presence of the ureter. One is called as a lateral pararectal space, also called as a lats go space. And one is called as the medial pararectal space called as the Oka Bayashi space. Now, the pararectal space is divided by the presence of ureter. Why do you want to know what, if at all, any gynecologist comes to me and asks me which is one single dissection which is important for me to understand, I would always put it as lateral pararectal space or lats go space. It contains the uterine artery, which is the most important vessel going towards the uterus. While the medial pararectal space is only having an inferior hypogastric artery. So this is the medial pararectal space. How do you call it as medial? Because it is medial to the ureter, but lateral to the uterosacrals. So both the pararectal spaces are lateral to the uterosacral. The medial pararectal space lies between the uterosacral medially, ureter laterally, and is by the presence of hypogastric nerve which is arising from the postganglionic sympathetic fibers of L4-5. And they are joined at the level of the uterine vein by S2-3-4 fibers. I will go into the details at the later time. For me or for any major gynecologist who wants to do complicated surgery, it is not the medial pararectal space which is important, but the lateral pararectal space. The lateral pararectal space is lateral to the ureter, medial to the internal iliac artery. The most important thing is the only structure that crosses the pararectal space completely transversely or only structure which crosses the pararectal space is the uterine artery and the vein. And therefore, they can be easily ligated. Last is another space which a lot of people talk about it. 
is the yabuki space now i why am i talking about this space now because the medial pararectal space with the nerve continues forward and when the nerve enters into the bladder at the level of uretro vesical junction this is a fourth space which is called and is characterized by the presence of inferior vesical vein so this is how you can see when you want to dissect you can see that this is the ureter and i am just going to show you yabuki space because there is a lot of confusion when you want to dissect the yabuki space the space is medial to the ureter at the level of the at the level of the uterovesical junction you can see the ureter going away and being dissected laterally you can see the hypogastric nerve on its way to the bladder and as you lateralize the ureter you should also lateralize the nerve and then you take the anterior cervico vesical ligament you can see the ureter trying to enter into the uterovesical junction at that level this is the uterovesical this is the anterior cervico vesical ligament that you have to dissect and as you dissect the anterior cervico vesical ligament you will see the structure this is the inferior vesical vein and this is the yabuki space the yabuki space is medial to the ureter characterized by the presence of the hypogastric nerve or the pelvic splanchnic nerve as it enters and the anatomical landmark is the inferior vesical space the lateral pararectal space as i said is the most important thing it lies lateral to the ureter and it is a potential space so it is lateral to the ureter medial to the internal iliac artery and the only structure that crosses it transversely is the uterine artery so you can now see how we dissect the pararectal spaces the dissection should be always parallel to the tubular structure this is the ukabayashi space lying medial to the ureter but lateral to the uterosacral and is characterized by the presence of the uterine vein let's see how we open the lateral pararectal space if you want to open the lateral pararectal space the first thing that you cut is the posterior leaf of broad ligament and expose the external iliac vessel now you can see the ureter crossing and now remain parallel and lateral to the ureter just remain parallel and lateral to the ureter and push so if you remain parallel and lateral to the ureter the only structure that you can see crossing the pararectal space is the uterine artery now you remain parallel and push the entire thing parallel to the uterine artery first you remain parallel to the ureter then parallel to the uterine artery and you will now see the paravesical space which is characterized by the presence of levator and i muscle so these are the two spaces you can very clearly see the latsgo space which is lateral and medially is the oka bayashi space so this is how you dissect the entire area this is the pararectal space now you sir so as the uterine this is called as the water under the bridge this is the uterine artery and then if you take so this is how you can see the pararectal space this are the s23 and 4 nerves which come and join this is the medial pararectal space i have already shown you the lateral pararectal space and the basic technology or the basic steps that you have to understand remain parallel to the ureter if you remain parallel and medial to the ureter you open the okabayashi space if you remain parallel and lateral to the ureter you open the latsgo space what about the prevesical space the prevesical space again is between as i said between the two medial umbilical ligament now we'll watch the video i have purposely not used any energy source now you can see the medial umbilical ligament we know that if i cross lateral to that there is no bladder there so remain medial to the medial umbilical ligament the space looks very tempting lateral to the lateral umbilical ligament never try to do that and then you dissect the entire bladder fat belongs to the bladder so remain above the fat when you want to go into the prevesical space you have to go between the two medial umbilical ligament and then just go with the technique that fat belongs to the bladder just remain above the fat 
and you can see how easily without a single energy source you can go ahead and do the pre recycle space which is very very clearly seen so it is important to understand that the left median and the right medial umbilical ligament the bladder lies between the two umbilical ligament and that is very very important now the pre sacral dissection this is something which you have added the pre sacral plane is a plane which is behind the rectum this is the sacral promontory you can see and you can see the superior hypogastric plexus at that level where the superior hypogastric yeah. plexus is formed after that the two nerves go on the either side as a posterior lateral aspect and they form the sympathetic area this is the pre sacral plane remember it is behind the rectum it is covered by the valdes fascia the basic rule of the body is all veins are covered by the fascia as long as you do not open the fascia you will not damage this now i am showing this space mainly because a lot of surgeons and gynecologists who have now come here have started doing endometriotic surgery with resection of the bowel and they wish to go behind the rectum so fat belongs to the rectum you can see the fat above and the pre sacral area which is the valdes fascia so this is how you do the dissection remain uh, below the fat just remain below the fat if you want to mobilize the rectum just remain below the fat there is a nice fascia which is called as the valdes fascia and these pre sacral veins you can easily see lie below the fascia as long as you do not damage the fascia you can see the way in which we are doing the dissection the fascias intra facial dissection is the key that is the pre sacral vein it looks a very easy plane but don't go into that plane because you will damage the vein and therefore remain above so these are the areas which is very very important to go what about corona mortis i will talk about the corona mortis when we discuss the vascular anatomy but corona mortis is something which is not for the gynecologist it is mainly for the surgeons who do hernia surgery it is a connection between the circumflex iliac vein which is a tributary of the external iliac and the obturator vein if there is a bleeding now bleeding can take place from both the systems that is the external iliac as well as the internal iliac and therefore it was called as the corona mortis because the death may take place if you damage these veins let us talk about the various fascias we are going to talk about the cervico vascular fascia which is a fascia which covers the anterior vaginal wall it is one fascia second is the valdes fascia third is the non villous fascia and fourthly endopelvic fascia so you all of you have to know these fascias because fascias are the main most important thing which you know why is it important the first thing is the cervico vascular fascia all veins lie underneath the fascia rule number 1 the cervico vascular fascia covers the cervix and the anterior vaginal wall if you remain above the cervico vascular fascia there is no way you can damage the vein remember good old days when you push the bladder with your gauze when you did open hysterectomy you had bleeding there because you went underneath the cervico vascular fascia so all rule one veins lie below the fascia the bladder lies anterior to the cervico vascular fascia if you understand this then it is very easy to do the dissection so i am going to show you how we dissect the cervico vascular fascia the cervico vascular fascia is dissected by giving a stretch on the peritoneum and remaining with the entire idea of fat belongs to the bladder so this is how we do the dissection this was a patient where we who had two or three cesarean sections and now this patient wanted to undergo a radical hysterectomy you can see how easily without using any energy source just stretch traction counter traction is the name of the game remain below the fat but anterior to the cervico vascular fascia this cervico vascular fascia is the most important thing why do you want to know what is the fascia fascia is nothing but a meshwork of collagen elastin and smooth muscles the most important thing you have to understand that all the major structures in the body are covered by the fascia and if you see how this is done so this is the denonvillous fascia when you want to dissect the denonvillous fascia 
when you want to start the dissection start the dissection at the level of the sacral promontory the first structure that you see is the ureter now start going medial to the ureter we know that the rectum lies between the two uterosacral now you go there and go with the technique fat belongs to the rectum with without use of any energy source you can still go in the correct plane anteward the uterus and go with an idea fat belongs to the rectum two layers of denon velius fascia will be very very nicely seen why, why is it important why is it important to do intrafacial dissection it is very important because even if you read all anatomy books fascias lack fibroblasts and because there are no fibroblasts if you do intrafacial dissection there is just no way you will have any kind of adhesions which are formed what about the ureter ureter dr sanjay patel always calls it as a friend everybody has its own name the ureter is the most important key point a lot of people say if the ureter was not there so much of importance of pelvic anatomy would not have been given but if that it is there we better know how to do and how to understand that what is the ureter ureter now if you want to go and read about the fascia this is the video article which you can download from youtube facial anatomy and its relevance in safe laparoscopic hysterectomy let's come to the major arteries we all know about this as i said in the beginning of the lecture you are not here to learn anatomy as anatomists we are not going to learn what are the branches of internal iliac what is more important for us to understand is that the uterine artery is the first branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery and this is an artery which is not arising immediately after the anterior division takes place so you can see after the bifurcation of the common iliac into the external iliac and the internal iliac artery the internal iliac artery anterior division traverses for a distance of almost 6 cm before the first branch which is the uterine artery which is given how do you understand this and how do you use this knowledge of anatomy if at all you want to ligate the internal iliac artery in any kind of conditions like postpartum hemorrhage do not try to ligate the internal iliac artery close to the bifurcation go more distally because there is a long available artery available for you for ligation after giving the first artery then the second branch is the superior vesical artery and then it continues as the obliterated hypogastric artery what happens to the posterior division immediately after the bifurcation the posterior division goes down and dips into the gluteal region and if you ligate the internal iliac artery close to the bifurcation these patients are likely to undergo intermittent claudication so lesson 1 long length of internal iliac artery available for ligation long length of uterine artery available for ligation so do not try to go very close to the bifurcation do not go try to go close to the uterus if at all there is bleeding from the uterine artery remember there is a long length of uterine artery available so this is the external iliac artery the internal iliac artery and as you can see as the internal iliac artery has to ascend upwards to form the obliterated hypogastric artery automatically there is a plane which is created between the internal iliac artery and the internal iliac vein making ligation of the internal iliac artery possible much easily if you go more and more distal do you understand that this artery which is there the artery which is seen here tries to go towards the anterior abdominal wall the vein is already going downwards and therefore you have a nice plane to ligate before the internal iliac artery what about the external iliac artery and the external iliac vein the most important thing you have to understand no no there are no tributaries of external iliac vein there are no vessels of the external iliac artery how do you use this knowledge of anatomy when you want to do nodal dissection remain parallel to the vessels parallel parallel to the vessels because there are no tributaries no branches if the external iliac artery and the vein had branches then it would have been very difficult to do the complete pelvic node dissection because it would be quite bloody to take each and every branch second important thing that you see in this picture 
the obturator artery and the vein they lie below the obturator nerve how do you use this knowledge of anatomy first knowledge of anatomy no tributaries no branches remain parallel to the major vessels and if there is a obturator artery and the obturator vein below the obturator nerve then when you do pelvic node dissection always remain anterior to the obturator nerve because if you go below the obturator nerve you will land up into bleeding from the obturator artery and the vein this is the picture that is very important this is a common iliac artery it is dividing into the external and internal and as i said if you try to take the internal iliac artery very close to the bifurcation you will find the common iliac vein because the common iliac vein bifurcates 2 inches below the common iliac artery you will find that the internal iliac artery is closely applied to the common iliac vein and therefore very important to understand that internal iliac ligation should be done as distally as possible because that's where you can do it very very easily what about the uterine vein contrary to the popular belief that the uterine artery and the vein they go together it is not so the artery goes above the ureter and the deep uterine vein goes below the ureter there can be one deep uterine vein or two deep uterine veins how do you use this knowledge of anatomy if you know that the artery goes anterior to the ureter and vein goes below the ureter if there is an arterial bleeding just dip the ureter down if it is a venous bleeding just lift up the ureter because you know that the bleeding is going to come from below so this is something which you have to remember bifurcation of the internal iliac artery is about 2 to 3 cm below the first branch arises 6 cm and therefore about there is a long length which is available for this what about the pelvic nerves we all know about the pelvic nerves the genito femoral nerve which lies most lateral to the to the to the entire uh, external iliac artery then we have the obturator nerve and of course we have the hypogastric nerve this is the hypogastric nerve the importance of this nerve is not for bladder preservation a lot of people ask me that if we cut the nerve what happens if we cut the nerve the bladder function in 90% of the patient will return back to normal the pelvic splanchnic nerves are responsible for having a good bladder innervation so in oncological practice what is important is to preserve the nerve for early recovery of the bladder but in benign conditions like endometriosis because you are doing a fertility sparing more than the recovery of the bladder function preservation of nerve is of utmost importance because it prevents a vaginal drying the vaginal wetness is because of this nerve sexual function in terms of vaginal wetness is because of this nerve so if you ask the people we have done this study when the nerves were cut on both the side the vaginal dryness is very high and sexual intercourse is a very very difficult problem so i am going to show you the demonstration of the nerves as i said if you go lateral to the ureter this is the lats go space parallel and lateral to the ureter will expose the external the, the internal iliac artery while if you go parallel and medial to the ureter you will get the hypogastric nerve so you go parallel and medial to the ureter you get the hypogastric nerve this is and then in this lats go space lower than the level you can see the s234 nerves this is called as the frank hauser's plexus or also called as the inferior hypogastric plexus how do you identify this very simple every time you don't have to dissect the nerve if you remain medial to the ureter then the chances of nerve getting damaged are very very difficult this is a diagram you guys must have seen very much easily all over the uh, all over the books the ureter what is important is i'm going to show you how the ureter is supplied so in this the first picture which you see on the screen on the left side you see the left ureter which is crossing from the lateral to the medial side but what is most important that it takes the supply at the higher level from the infundibulo pelvic ligament then in the next picture you can see the ureter crossing from the lateral to the medial side but what is more important that it is now carrying its own blood supply 
ureter carries its own mesentery the basic supply comes from the infant below pelvic ligament on the top and the uterine artery branch in the lower part so in the lower part even if you cut the uterine artery the ureter carries its own mesentery this is what you are seeing on the third picture and the final picture that you see is contrary to the belief that the ureter is only cross it crossed by the uterine artery the ureter lies in the fork between the uterine artery anteriorly and the uterine vein posteriorly so you can see the ureter carrying its own mesentery you can see both the pictures carrying their own mesentery if you see go between the mesentery and the ureter then the ureter will look blue the mesentery of the ureter is always on the medial side of the ureter how do you use this knowledge of anatomy in endometriosis or any kind of uterolysis that you want to do remain anterior to the ureter or dissect the ureter on the lateral side do not dissect the ureter on the medial side because the mesentery of the ureter lies on the medial side so this is a picture this is a small video to show you how it looks like so you can see this is the course of the ureter we are going to trace right from the top over there this is the lateral part of the colon you can see the ureter this is the left ureter and once you see the left ureter you see the branch of the gonadal i will be you will see it more clearly that is supplying the ureter then if you cut the peritoneum medial to the infant below pelvic ligament at the level of the sacral promontory the first structure that you see is going to be the ureter and you can see the ureter now you can see that the ureter is carrying its own mesentery ureter is always lateral to the uterosacral and always lateral to the uterosacral and at the base of the uterosacral so how do you use this knowledge of anatomy if you remain at the apex of the ureter at the uterosacral you will never damage the ureter look at the pictures the ureter is carrying its own mesentery and you can see this is the pararectal space dissection simple with a suction cannula parallel and lateral to the ureter the first structure that you see is the internal iliac and the only structure that crosses it transversely is the uterine artery so you can see the uterine artery coming up and then push everything towards the uterus and that opens the paravesical space so you can see the uterine artery i am repeating these videos so that everybody should have a very clear idea this is the ureter carrying its own mesentery look at the distance of the ureter from the uterosacral 4 cm so if you antevert the uterus and cut at the apex of the uterosacral the ureter lies at the base of the uterosacral you will never ever damage the ureter the artery goes above you can see very clearly the uterine artery going above the ureter and the uterine vein going below the ureter so again this is the knowledge which is very very important this is the deep uterine vein the artery is going anterior to the ureter the deep uterine vein is going lower than the ureter the ureter lies in the fork between the two arteries now this is the branch of the uterine artery which supplies the ureter and this is a consistent picture unless you unless you know about this you are likely to damage the ureter when you do this now the cervical vesical fascia you can see the ureter doesn't pierce the cervical vesical fascia but remains anterior to the cervical vesical fascia so you can see that if you go below the cervical vesical fascia only then you will damage things if you remain anterior to the cervical vesical fascia you don't damage anything so if you remain at the apex of the uterosacral there is no way you can damage you can see by remaining at the apex of the uterosacral you can do a total laparoscopic hysterectomy the ureter is 200 meters away from you this is a very nice picture i would like to show everybody this is what we i call the ureter you can see the patty these sauces this is like the mesentery of the ureter anteriorly is the uterine artery and posteriorly is the uterine vein it is usually the venous bleeding which normally hampers the gynecologist when we are doing the surgery and this venous bleeding you try to coagulate you try to coagulate finally it turns black as i have shown and will damage so it is important to bring a separation 
between the artery and the vein the ureter lies in the floor you can separate the ureter lift up the ureter and then ligate the uterine vein or coagulate the uterine vein now this is a uh, these are some pictures of applied anatomy this is i am going to show you so you see this is the recto vaginal recto vesical pouch uh, sorry recto vaginal pouch that we are opening up fat belongs to the rectum once you do that then dissection of the oka bayashi space medial and parallel to the ureter medial and parallel to the ureter you can see the nerve coming up very very nicely so this is the ureter here that's the nerve which is coming up that's the hypogastric nerve the hypogastric nerves gives multiple branches to the cervix and to the uterus so if you want to do nerve sparing all these branches have to be cut and at the level of the uterine vein you will see the s2 3 4 fiber joining in so as to form the inferior hypogastric plexus again you can see the dissection of the lats go space remain parallel and lateral remain this is one space you need to completely identify and master it because this is something which is easily seen that is the superior vesical artery you can see that is the uh, uterine artery once this is done you can see the uterine artery and the vein you can see that the artery is going above the vein is going below and in the lats go space at the deeper level you will find the s2 3 4 nerves so the s2 3 4 nerves lie in the lats go space but at a deeper level so when you want to do the dissection of the lateral space remain at the level of the ureter don't try to go down you can see the anatomical uh, the anatomical relation between the uterine vein and the and the hypogastric nerve if you take the vein lateral to the ureter you do non nerve sparing if you take the uterine vein medial to the ureter so this is the deep uterine vein if you cut it lateral to the ureter it is non nerve sparing if you cut the uterine vein medial to the ureter it is nerve sparing a very very simple knowledge of anatomy so you can see the vein being taken medial to the ureter so automatically it is nerve sparing so i am showing you how important it is to understand the anatomy every time a gynecologist need not find out where the nerve is if you want to preserve the nerve just use this knowledge take the uterine vein and clamp the uterine vein medial to the ureter and you will see that the nerve will be automatically preserved then if you go forward you can see the branches of the nerve as they go towards the uterus they have to be cut so as to have a nerve sparing surgery now this is important for all of us to understand you can see the nerve and then this is the vein which is going below this is the area where you can see the nerve being dissected laterally all these nerves go laterally and lateralization of the nerve is very very important now you enter the yabuki space as you enter the yabuki space every time we have to remain medial every time we have to remain medial to the ureter never going lateral to the ureter these are few branches which is called these are the these are the branches of the artery uh, of the nerve which you have to take and once you clamp that you will see the yabuki space this is the yabuki space which is open and then of course the dissection of the bladder remaining anterior to the cervical vesical fascia and going below the fat so these are important things that you have to remember this is the anterior cervical vesical ligament cervical vesical ligament that is going from the cervix into the bladder commonly called as the ureteric tunnel always carries two veins along with it and you can now see the anterior parametrium being open now this is the anterior parametrium i'll talk about it later all that i have said is in the surgical pelvic anatomy in gynae oncology this is published in the figo international journal of obstetric and gynecology how do you apply this knowledge of hysterectomy uh, this knowledge of anatomy this was a patient who was referred to us after having a vaginal hysterectomy patient had a, a large vesico vaginal fistula now in this patient 
what we did was we just you can see the everything was badly stuck the momentum was badly stuck and uh, the momentum was badly stuck so we used this knowledge of anatomy remaining medial to the medial umbilical ligament going with this area taking awesome. out below and remaining above the fat and then dissecting the entire bladder this is the same video which i showed you you can see how nicely we have dissected the cave of radius completely no use of energy source just pure knowledge of anatomy similarly we had a recto vaginal fistula patient recto uh, vaginal fistula patient referred to us after a vaginal hysterectomy we do not know where the rectum is it's very easy this is the fact you find that the rectum is over there you find that the plane looks very easy but you tell the assistant to push and you will find that the rectum was very very badly stuck now how do you dissect this rectum again the knowledge of anatomy what is the knowledge what does it tell us that the rules of anatomy remain the same remain above the fat so i came from the lateral side you can see and go above the fat no use of energy source just remain above the fat look at the fat look at the fat don't look anywhere else the anatomy will not change even if it is badly stuck slowly and steadily you will get into the correct plane this is the fat fat belongs to the rectum so this was a recto vaginal fistula even then the anatomy is more or less remain constant in the area where there is no disease so we have gone about you can see nicely how the rectum is being taken down remaining above the fat this is how they use the knowledge of anatomy to do a good dissection now this is a large cervical fibroid along with the endometrial cancer you can see there is no space to enter and now how do you do this so look i am not able to find anything in the pelvis so i come back to the sacral promontory i look at the ureter because i know that there is no space available to us in the pelvis i identify the ureter and i don't use any energy source then just go parallel and lateral to the ureter you know that's what we have trained ourselves that just go parallel there is no space in the pelvis just go parallel and lateral to the ureter because not only have you done a favor by identifying the ureter but you will be able to see the ureter and the internal iliac artery just do the same dissection and continue to do the dissection till you see the uterine artery once you see the uterine artery with such a large fibroid you can see the uterine artery can be easily dissected and then once you have dissected this just clip the uterine artery your entire job becomes much more easy so applied knowledge of anatomy such a big uterus we have started from the sacral promontory and taken this finally there are 10 surgical mantras of pelvic dissection uterine artery arises 6 cm after the bifurcation so long length of internal iliac artery long length of uterine artery is available the uterine artery and the vein cross the pararectal space they are the only structures which cross the space transversely artery lies above the ureter vein lies below the ureter so whenever you are in problem if you have to just find out from whether it is an arterial bleeding or venous bleeding and then take care of that the pararectal and the paravesical spaces are not the spaces which are immediately seen there are potential spaces and they are the potential spaces which you have to open by remaining parallel to the ureter the denonvillous fascia consists of two layers one goes with the posterior form of the vagina second layer remains over the rectum the uterosacral the cardinal ligaments and the paracolpus they form a single fan shaped structure and these are the supports of the uterus the ureteric tunnel is a misnomer it should be called as a vesico uterine ligament it is a ligament which traverses from the bladder to the cervix always carries two veins through which the bladder drains into the deep uterine vein you do not see a inferior vesical or a superior vesical vein in females they drain through the deep uterine vein the hypogastric nerve lies medial to the ureter and always lateral to the uterosacral the uterine vein is an anatomical landmark for identification of pelvic splanchnic nerves and the 10th statement is very very important 
the anatomical variations of vascular structure and the nerve structures are extremely rare in females so if somebody comes and tells us that well it was a very distorted anatomy the anatomy is not distorted your thought process probably is distorted the anatomy remains the same use the rules of anatomy to do the dissection because if everything if you know where it is if you know what you are doing then all is well and everything will go so it's all about anatomy anatomy and nothing else but anatomy so the success stories about anything in my life is based on only two words based on this anatomy we did radical hysterectomy based on this anatomy we did excentrations and based on this anatomy we also did world's first laparoscopic retrieval of the donor uterus because we knew where the vessels were we knew where the nerves were we knew where the ureter was and this is how we do it so thank you very much ma madam thank you all of you and the entire delhi society for giving me this opportunity i hope in the last few minutes i have been able to show you everything it's an extensive topic but what is important is to understand the applied anatomy and not anatomy as an anatomy so thank you very much madam thank you all of you for being patiently listening to this thank you thank you dr shelis i would now request dr sanjeevni kanna to say just a few words ah uh, yes actually nobody can speak a single word after uh, what dr shelish speaks but yes to learn more he is he is uh, my guru he is everyone's guru thank you and the uh, we have learned so much by his simple uh, simple uh, dictums like fat belongs to bladder fat belongs to rectum and have managed to uh, uh, protect uh, you know the uh, surgical principles and that the section is always parallel to a tubular structure never at right angles to it Dr. Shailesh, I just wanted to have uh, you clarify one thing: that if there are two uterine veins, then will both of them always be uh, posterior to the ureter? Yeah, both of them are always posterior. There is always a small vein which accompanies the uterine artery, which is mistaken as the uterine vein. It is nothing but a vasa vasorum of the uterine artery. So okay. uterine veins are divided into two deep uterine veins. Normally, we have okay. two deep uterine veins. We do not have one uterine vein because the uterine veins have to drain not only the uterus but the bladder in females also drains through the deep uterine vein. And uh, is it always that in a simple uh, case uh, without malignancy or any? Uh, Uh, you know, difficult sort of situation that the uterine veins have to be always be dealt with. No, not necessary. Not, not necessary. not necessary. Not necessary. As I said, the key for any kind of uh, intrafacial or type one hysterectomy is to remain at the apex of the uterosacral. Because if you remain at the apex of the uterosacral, the ureter lies at the base of the uterosacral. Artery and vein ascend upwards, and you have mm -hmm. long length in case anything goes wrong. For you for ligation, so you don't have to take the uterine artery and vein independently. You do not have to take the ureter. The idea of using this knowledge of anatomy, this is what lies in the retroperitoneum. So, if you do not want to expose this and still do a gate surgery, how do I use this? So, just remain at the level of the anti at the apex of the uterosacral. Everything will be just perfect. But uh, but the uterine veins will be sacrificed uh, yes. in any TLH. Yes. Yes. Without it, that, you can't separate no, no, the uterus. Without that, you cannot do that. Yeah. Without that, you cannot do that. Yeah. But they will come without much ado, yeah. without much effort. Without much. So effort. I think you know one of the wonderful things that I uh, had read uh, from your uh, um, paper oh, is okay. that over the years. Uh, it is uh, not the anatomy which has evolved it is not that female pelvic anatomy has changed over time over so many centuries but it is our understanding of uh, pelvic anatomy which is enhanced so much and magnified manifold by uh, uh, magnification of the laparoscope so our understanding is better and like we used to i mean so far we still do say that uh, are you going to operate by conventional laparotomic surgery um, there will be a time very soon thanks to uh, efforts of all masters like you when there'll be a time when we'll be saying that 
oh are you going to do a conventional laparoscopic surgery or you know i mean we may take uh, many leaps and bounds uh, so now of course and including nano and so many other things which may come up uh, about um, you uh, have given us all the details but i was reading about uh, the double hump or uh, related to l5 s1 l4 l5 and s1 for people who are doing uh, sacrocolpopexy and so there is this double hump which is described and that's usually due to disease so i thought uh, uh, we could just know about it for those who are interested so normally the angle of inclination between the lumbar 4 and lumbar 5 is about 20 degrees and the angle of inclination between l5 and s1 is suddenly at 60 degrees it curves into the pelvis but if there is some disease or some uh, problem with the disc uh, length then sometimes you have two humps so you will have one hump at l4 l5 level and you will have uh because that incline is a uh, greater it may be 40 degrees and the incline at l5 s1 is also there so you'll have two humps in relation to the sacrum so if you're going to fix a mesh there then one should actually see a ct scan uh, image beforehand and assess the case properly because if you fix it on the intervertebral disc then there will be Uh, it's a lot of problems afterwards so this double hump also is a very interesting uh, part uh, can you tell us uh, you told us so much about the alterations of anatomy uh, which may be like deviations from normal can you would you like to point out anything about uh, um, alterations of anatomy with disease uh, you have told us the approach that there is always the steadfast rule of going by important uh, uh, structures and important st- surgical principles and finding our way but is there any other distortion of anatomy due to disease that uh, you uh, would like to share with us yeah there is one thing so one of the major things madam i would like to share with you is what we have published about the facial anatomy the <laughs> facial anatomy so when you are doing all these uh, cystocele and rectocele repair uh these were the things where we thought that it is uh, all the conventional approaches for you everybody was trans vaginal and they used to put either the meshes or you are you used to cut the vagina and repair them so what is the distortion that takes place is actually it is the laxity of the cervical vesical fascia and the denonvillous fascia which causes this kind of prolapses like rectocele and cystocele so they say that vagina is a victim of a process which is not in the vagina but it is a process which is outside so the distortion of anatomy usually takes place when you have prolapses like you get the uh, uh, entire thing cervical vesical fascia which is lax that is the reason you put the trans obturator tape the fascia becomes stout then you get distortion of the anatomy when you have had various kinds of multiple surgeries which you have done but as far as the most important thing in your practice would be the broad ligament fibroids wherein the ureters actually get lifted up and broad ligament fibroid myomectomies i have done seen people doing those myomectomies and then suddenly landing up into the ureter not knowing what it is so distortion is usually because of the size and the shape of the uterus and also because of the disease like endometriosis but again even if there is a distortion so distortion of anatomy is there so when i tell tell all my people to train for anatomy i say the first important thing when you have a distorted anatomy is to restore the anatomy and then take care of the disease process so restoration of anatomy and for restoration of anatomy you need principles you cannot restore the anatomy haphazardly people go from left to right right to left so how do you do the best thing when you are in the operation theater always try and work out whether the assistant is listening or no this is my next step this is what i am planning to do and stick to anatomy the anatomical rules don't change we have di- we have done multiple bad cases we have always stuck to the rules so my entire advice to everybody is distortion takes place in multiple pathologies 
but if you go by the rules of anatomy and if you want to get the rules embedded in your hand train yourself on simple cases so that when difficulty comes then your hands and mind are already trained for doing such kind of things uh thank you ma'am thank you dr sanjeevni uh, dr malvika uh, would you like to say a few I'll things take, i'll just actually say, uh, yes ma'am yes sure ma'am from uh, malvika's time and uh, yeah. i want i want to know uh, that when you talk about the okobayashi space and the latsko space and that uh, their uh, uh, dividing line is the ureter so lateral to the ureter is the latsko space in which we'll find the uterine artery upon the section and when we have to trace the uterine artery we go parallel to the uterine artery there and and medial to the ureter will be the okabayashi space and which is going to be important for the nerves so uh, if we have to dissect me uh, lateral to the ureter it's all right because the ureter can remain attached to the peritoneum which we have incised but when we have to go to the okabayashi space medial to the ureter that means we have to strip the peritoneum of the ureter you are muted you are you are to you are to strip the peritoneum of the ureter what you are saying is perfectly all right so this is where your trick is important to remain outside the mesentery because the mesentery of the ureter also lies on the medial side and the peritoneum is also on the medial side so you have to watch that very carefully because if you are while stripping the ureter from the peritoneum you may strip the mesentery of the ureter which is very very critical where so, exactly is the mesentery of the ureter the mesentery of the ureter always lies on the medial side of the ureter and okay. therefore when you do a endometriotic surgery and when you want to dissect the ureter always dissect on the anterior surface of the ureter or lateral so a lot of things happen inadvertently if you watch a lot of good endometriotic surgeons operating you will find that they are doing it they are doing it because they are no so what is important they will always dissect anterior to the ureter you will always see people dissecting anterior to the ureter in between from medial to the ureter they have to dissect and they have to take care of the mesentery and watch the mesentery so mesentery is always on the medial side that means we don't strip the ureter bare off on all sides no. otherwise we will compromise its yeah, it will compromise thank you thank i you. have a ton of questions more but i mustn't take more time malvika please <laughs> sanjeevni you can always talk to him and there is no problem But I think people may be calling him up during surgery. That doctor, Shailesh, we are in trouble. What to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, he has no time actually. He has no time. Anybody? Yes. You know, Shailesh, I think it was a wonderful, wonderful depiction of laparoscopic anatomy. Thank you. More and more of us are going into laparoscopic surgeries. I think we need to go back to the anatomy all the while. So everybody, whether we are startups. or we are already doing up to a certain level we can definitely improve upon our skills and like sanjeevni was also bringing forward various aspects of going into the way we constantly have to do that and she is muted mala you muted yourself Oh, I'm sorry. I continue to talk. Am I okay now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So I hope you heard all the appreciations that I'm giving. That we not only are going to fall back on simple landmark of entering the uh, peritoneal uh, into the abdominal cavity, but also going on progressing in our skill towards doing various complicated surgery, especially like endometriosis. Though we may not touch onco surgery, but endometriosis is something which yes. can be really very bad. so here the landmarks you have suggested so beautifully and also the type you know how you can tackle the vessels in case there is a pph the internal iliac ligation the uterine artery which is the best approach for a large uterus for large fibroids back that the ureter in relation to broad ligament fibroids again very beautifully put across silesh you did a wonderful job i think Thank you. you have it is always a treat to watch you and uh you know you have made things so simple that we have to keep going on reiterating every now and then for your same talk i hope it's been recorded and we can kind of do that and uh, like you said i remember the time when you did the first you try and transplant it was something 
that you get the goose pimples if you talk about that it was excellent thank what, you with a total focused mind would have done that all your amenitorium of your doctors and everybody and the whole thing went off very well i think anatomy has been made extremely clear and we must remember that this is what we fall back on because we are used to doing uh, you know conventional surgery and like sir gd was saying that should we call it a conventional laparoscopic surgery or the other techniques which are now coming up also have to be you know that things are moving and so dynamically progressing it's excellent thank you thank you very much thank you sir sir you have to give uh, two minutes uh, to the road map of a long learning curve to the youngsters i think you know uh, this speciality has to grow and for that uh, the easy road map has to be there by you actually madam there is always a good thing to do nowadays the things are different when we started doing laparoscopy there were no rules for how to do the surgery and as one of my very close friend dr ramesh from bangalore he always tells me shailesh we always knew that we have to go about the fat we always knew that we have to stay anterior to the ureter you just gave words to what was taking place in our mind and because i given words to what is there in anatomy anatomy has remained the same female anatomy has remained the same have we nothing has changed we just understand and we are trying to make the rules so these rules are not existing so first of all try and believe the anatomy don't try to show that you are a hero surgeon just believe that god has created something be fortunate that female anatomy doesn't have variations so you cannot give an excuse to say that i will not learn anatomy because there is no variation in the anatomy and the third and the most important thing is there are so many informative sessions like doing and operating we used to conduct a lot of courses in terms of hands on training course unfortunately because of the covid it is not there but everybody who is an expert the responsibility lies on him or her to pass on the skills to the other because it is not the competitiveness which is going to make you better when you teach somebody you learn a lot yes. because you know what you are training them and that is important so if you want to carry the legacy forward try to train as many people as you want even though it is like reinventing the wheel every time you get a new person you have to restart with the same enthusiasm which i do every time but it is very important because this will do a great service to our medical system rather than criticizing somebody if you become an expert you owe it to the society you owe it to your resident to teach them uh, so let, let, let me just share one thing that i have been doing training program in laparoscopy and pelvic anatomy is something which i have always included as a separate day talk and which has been really so simple things like inferior epigastric and to see where the round leg ligament is making an exit from the abdominal cavity to trace all those things you know even the medial umbilical fold and etc etc this is these landmarks are so important and i think this is a important part of any training program the laparoscopic anatomy should be taught nicely just like endo suturing this should be another day of anatomy absolutely Absolutely. All the landmarks. Absolutely. Sir, uh, thank you so much. We have a couple of questions. If you have the time to answer, so there is one question that if you have a broad ligament fibroid, how do we protect the ureter? Do we identify it first, or how, what are the precautions one takes? Always identify the ureter when it is a broad ligament fibroid, because broad ligament fibroid invariably displaces the ureter. and more often than not it displaces the ureter more on the lateral side rather than the medial side so you have to be very careful so open the ureter at the level of the sacral promontory you can actually see the ureter because it's a very simple thing to be seen uh, if the patient is thin if the patient is very fat you can still open the peritoneum watch the ureter and as you do it and uh, take out the fibroid i would also suggest that it is not always about protecting the ureter every time once you take out the fibroid there is no harm in tracing the ureter backwards to see whether you have damage rather than spending a sleepless night but tracing the ureter from the sacral promontory is the easiest things to do thank you sir that was a great tip so we go to the sacral promontory and trace the ureter the second question is uh, how do we identify an ectopic kidney in case it's necessary very very nice question very good question lot of people are doing laparoscopic hysterectomy like uh, what we call in Ma in maharashtra supari case that somebody calls the endoscopy
endoscopic surgeon and pays, post the patient for hysterectomy. Not many uh, investigations are done. Gynecologists will call an expert to do it. Oh, except for sonography, there is nothing else which has been done. Patient is bleeding and patient is taken for hysterectomy. <laughs> Pelvic kidney is something which lies always between the bifurcation of the common iliac. That is number one. And number two, if you do not see the ureter at the level of the sacral promontory crossing from the lateral to the medial side. So first thing that when you put a laparoscope, watch the two ureters underneath the peritoneum. If you do not see the ureter underneath the peritoneum, then something is wrong. Simple thing, train your mind that once you enter, it is like driving a car. First clutch, then this, this. Just take 30 seconds to see the anatomy and then proceed. Don't try to be an RE. Nobody is going to give you a gold medal if you finish a hysterectomy in 8 minutes. Thank you, sir. This was from Dr. Vandana. So, how many times do we, uh, do you come across a double ureter, uh, sir? Many or times. One? Many times. Especially in radical hysterectomies that we have done more than 1000 now. And uh, we have come across double ureter very commonly. But the most important thing is... Uh, Double ureter also follow the principle, they also cross from the lateral to the medial side. So, rules remain the same. They remain as the most medial tubular structure in the pelvis. So, it doesn't matter. And invariably, the two ureters join and become single ureter at the level of the ureterovacycle junction. So, there are never two ureters inserted into the ladder. There are two ureters at the upper part and then they join as a single one. Is it a thumb rule? I mean, is it always yeah, like that? Yeah. Yes, yes. I have done at least at least 20 to 25 U double ureters, but the entry is single. Yeah, I've seen you do it actually in one of the cases. Yeah, the so entry is always single. Entry okay. is always single. So entry into the bladder, you mean, sir? Yeah, entry into the bladder is always single. It is never right. two and two. It's always single. And the they join the same. at one point. They join at one point because embryologically, they go from the genitourinary butt and they get from two. So one from the upper calyx, one from the lower calyx. But when they go no, lower down, it joins and becomes one. So don't try to trace the ureter. But the rules will be the same. Both the ureters will cross from the lateral to the medial side. And if and the relation, I, I can also show you multiple videos. I think one of the videos on our video is on the YouTube how to tackle double ureter because this question was repeatedly asked to me when I used to go to AHL that you are doing so many radical hysterectomies, how do you decide two ureters at the same time? It yeah. doesn't mean as two ureters. And thank you so much. The course sir. and all will be the same, Salish. It's going to be the course, all going together, all. the artery and the vein. Usually, the... usually at the level of the uterine artery or the vein, they join to one another. Okay. At the level of the uterine artery. May corresponding to the ischial spine, when you look at the thing. Okay. Please look at me. So we'll definitely explore the YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Minakshi, would you like to say a few words? Uh, thank you, Dr. Firstly, thank you, Dr. Dr. Mamta. Yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So I think yes, a big yes. thanks first to Dr. Mamta to push us to have this because I think it was a fantastic uh, initiative. As far as Dr. Selesh is concerned, I'm completely spellbound and mesmerized. I don't have any words. Because to see a good surgery is always a pleasure. But to hear a good teacher is something which gives me goosebumps. And I think to make things which are difficult look so simple and straightforward, it's not the anatomy, it's not the slides, it's not the surgeries. It is the skill of the teacher, which, I mean, I have full respect for. Thank you, Dr. Selish, for having that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Always thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you hope soon. To, sir, sir, I just want to say one thing. I've seen you operating a number of times. I'm Dr. Divya Singhil. And like they say for Muhammad Ali, the boxer, that he floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Yeah. And that's exactly how you operate. You know how to pick up the cancer, the lymph nodes. So smoothly you go through the peritoneums and the fascia. It's lovely watching you, sir. You're a master. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, you Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mamda. Thank you, Dr. Divya. Thank you, Sharda Madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, you had a brilliant uh, you, idea and brilliant uh, uh, it is you know, all topic it is no, it uh, tonal effort and yeah, so you for inviting us but a wonderful idea to have this presentation and dr shardad and ma'am for sparing uh, her time with us on this session it means a lot to all of us dr so i am reminding on the 13th we will take up on the covid so i i, I my request that everybody joins it on 13th at 4 o'clock uh, yes, dr yes, ramanand will be there yes thank yes. you thank you madam thank, thank you, you. thank you, you. That. that's a very important topic dr sharda madam that's a very very important topic for so, all uh, thank you to dr mittal again and her team thank you ma'am for this particular topic thank you very much ma'am thank, thank you, you. thank you bye ma'am dr malvika ma'am thank you thank you divya and vandana and vandana always uh, stays uh, you know with a lot of unspoken words but doesn't matter we can share more later thank you it's always a pleasure ma'am it's always a pleasure to hear always you. such a wonderful team such wonderful teams of delhi gani forum yes thank you thank, thank you ma'am thank you thank you dr mamta thank you bye malvika thank you so thank much thank you ji bye bye take care bye